Did you see me? It's Bruce of Nature Calls. Finally finished my camo winter palace tarp. So excited. Rips up by the roll, has this outdoor ink printing process. You can pick all kinds of things from maps to galaxies. Um, but I really wanted a winter tarp for hammocking in the snow. I'll go through a little bit of how I made this, you know, kind of a real quick, quick uh, sewing tutorial type thing. I've got so many on building tarps and all that, so I won't kind of belabor it. Um, well, it's good to do that. And after all that, I'll go through and show you kind of the components and, and how I like to set up my tarps. All right, so here's the kit um, that I got from Ripstop by the Roll. So this is just the kit and the kitty. Uh, seal. All right, so now we've got here is the whole kit. Very fun. Winter Hex 12 tarp kit. So obviously you get the fabric and I got the outdoor ink um, winter camo fleck tarn. Um, this will be my winter snow gear and then they sent you all the little um, reinforcements pre-cut and all the little beastie d's and uh yeah just great some grow grain fantastic I'm trying to show you that i can do all this in a small area because i'm going to unroll this whole thing put fold it in half lengthwise and have the the strong print I kind of like that too. Um, I'll do it with this stronger print facing into each other. So that's the first thing I need to do is unravel all this. And this is the 1.8 ounce uh, Sil Poly. Going for a little something a little bit stronger for winter because I do get sticks and stuff falling on me. Okay, so I found the two corners. So I'm just going to put those two corners together. Work my way down. Like I'd be like in a small apartment. I don't need that much room. And in the end, if I'm off like say half an inch or something like that, I'm gonna be cutting the doors anyway. So I can make some little adjustments at that point. Oh, this beautiful fabric. Oh yeah. Okay, so now this is the center. Oh, cool, they even got, see this is actually printed. So I can actually go with the print. So there's the, so if you get the print, you can just go right to that. Fold the two prints on each other. That's cool. So now I'm just gonna sew right down and I can go ahead and sew on this gap a little bit uh, because I'm gonna be folding and folding and getting that um, that fold together. I'm going to probably just sew right down where those where the two the two prints actually meet and lay on top of each other. Uh, just so you can see that Bruce makes mistakes too. So I, I shouldn't have done this short side. I should have started here and gone down this long side. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to just take all that out. But I, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start because I'm going to be cutting the doors off anyway right here so uh, normally I'd have to rip all that out but this is just, just going to hold that in for me real nice I'm going to start sewing down the long side and that'll be easy to keep those two edges together so yes I screw up from time to time so we'll get that all lined up and I just what I do is I just kind of slide these back and forth some people can pin things I just found I don't need to do that. I just slide it, drop my needle down. I'm gonna let it ride just on this side of the foot. Do a lock stitch. I haven't sewn for a while, so I'll, I'll take it easy for a little bit and then I'll be able to speed it up as I get kind of back acclimated. I mean, I'm not sewing all the time. Double check everything. 
I just find it easier to not pin it. I can just check everything every once in a while. And uh, considering how long it takes to pin something, just way too long. And I can just start. But if pinning or clamping's your thing, you go right ahead. Right, so now I have the long end all sewn together. Now to make the doors, <clears throat> what I have to do is on one of the ends, or on both ends, I'll come in 15 inches, and then I'll draw a line from there down to this corner down here. So it'll be a little triangle that I take out and that'll start making the doors. So this is where, you know, you're gonna need like a hallway or something like that to get, um, you know, at least, at least that um, as straight a line as possible. Um, and I have a long ruler I gotta go find, but that's, so that's probably the most complicated thing you'll probably need to have room for is, is these kind of, to make real good, accurate cuts. But I don't really need to measure, I mean, I just need to measure from that point to that point, lay my ruler across and cut it. This right here, this is going to be the top or the ridge line of the tarp. So it might seem weird that I'm gonna cut this way. This is how you make the doors. So I'm gonna go in 15 inches. And I'm going off of their little mark here. If you don't have this printed fabric, you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to go right to there. And then I'm gonna take my big ruler. And I have this, it's like a drywall ruler. And uh, I'll put this from that mark that I just made to the very corner. I did go ahead and get my clips out um, just to try and keep fabric together. They work really well. I like them a lot better than pins. Um, they grip pretty well. So I did get my clips out. Now to finish off the doors, so this is that point. This is the outer point of the door right here. So this is the bottom of the tarp, or this will be the part that's pulled out. Katie, stop hitting the camera. The other end, that end up that way is the ridge line. So just to finish off the door to get the right closure and all that, we're going to cut off a little angle down here. Go up six inches right there. And then from the corner, going to go 44 inches I found my jig that I use normally for making stuff I'm glad I found it someone put it outside so it's probably a warp to be the band now um, but I'm going to verify my spots got a bunch of my Workout weights to help hold it all down. And make sure I've got that right. Okay, now I'm gonna get my really sharp scissors. And then cut that out and that'll, that'll be the door on one end. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. These weights are doing a nice job. Um, definitely use whatever you got around, books, canned food, your dog if it sits nicely. You know, you just have someone stand on it. Nice. I got some camo for something else. I got my straight edge, some weights on there. Now I'll just connect those dots. If you're into catenary cuts, you could do a catenary cut here. I don't really care about catenary cuts. I've, I don't necessarily see what they're worth other than just getting rid of just a little bit of weight. Um, 
because when you do your doors, you can adjust them to where they're really nice and tight. And then on your, on your leading edge going out, you can do the same thing there. Plus, if you get anything at all, it's just going to be a little bit of a, a wrinkle. Um, it's not like doing the catenary cut is that, that important, really. Now, we'll just cut that off. Now we'll do that to the other side and I'm cutting through both sides. So I'm getting all those cuts at one time. So I'll do the other side and then we'll get to the next step. All right, so now I've got uh, the doors all cut out. So my next stage is to finish the ridge line. Um, so it's this, don't know what it's called. Some people call it a flat felled seam. Um, or pseudo flat felled or whatever. So the next thing is to take this whole deal and flip it right side out. And then we're going to sew down the ridge line again. Sorry for the camera work, but uh, you know, when you got trying to get feet, cameras and all that kind of stuff together. There's my pedal. I'm just letting a little bit squeeze out on that side and that should get, put me just in the right spot. Get everything all settled again. All right, so the final step, so I've done the step two of the, of the ridge line connection. So the last one is to open it up, butterfly it out, drop your tab down to one side or the other. Mine's kind of naturally falling that way. So that's the way I'll go. And then sew right down that edge right there. And that'll be the end of your, uh, your seam. And that's pretty waterproof. I'd still seam seal it. Now this is where you're going to have to manhandle it because you're going to have to be shoving a lot of nylon down down the side there of your sewing machine. Drop needle, back it up. I'll just run right down that side. And that'll be the end of this. My next step is that I, I put on my reinforcements, make sure everything's somewhat flat. And this is not gonna fit that shape, then I will come back later and just trim it up. And the seams, I use the, just the seam sealant for, cause I'll use this again. Um, I'll use this again when I'm seam sealing the whole thing. But um, let's get that on there. And I do this at this point because I'll come back later and I'll do, um, I'll put a hem all the way around. So let's get this on there and get some delay on top of that. It's not, I found that it's not like mission critical to glue this down because uh, sometimes the glue doesn't stick perfectly, but it helps me when I do my, um, sewing it holds it in place and i and i kind of have a feeling that it does do something so there we go i'll just put them around on all the different corners and and even if it sticks to my floor i can just rub that off it's basically rubber cement okay now i've got all the reinforcements kind of kind of glued on to help and uh, now i'm going to go around so i've got all of all those in locations and now i'm going to go around and i'm going to do like a quarter inch hem all the way around it. And I like to do the reinforcements beforehand 
because um, then they get locked into the hem and I think it's much stronger. It might not be, um, but it just makes sense to me. So uh, I'll show you how we put that little, we're just gonna start on one side and work our way all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna fold in, I put the reinforcement on the inside, so this paler side. Now I'm going to fold in about a quarter of an inch and then fold in again. Like that. I'll drop that down on, and I'll drop my needle. Now I'm good to go. So now all I can do, all I need to do is just kind of line it all up. Just like that. I put a little bit of tension on it. Lock it in. Okay, I just kind of get set up again. Like that. Now let's go all the way around. And to do the tie outs, the kit comes with these big one inch Beastie D's, which are fine. I'll use those on the ridge line and the tie. Um, the doors, um, but for the tie outs, I use line locks. I got to order those, but it's basically the same principle. Uh, the line locks, I just like because you can adjust them right at the tarp. Um, the, the ridge line, I'm going to do uh, the Nama claw, and then the doors are going to be on bungees. So a uh, little bit different thing, but they provide you with these one inch BCDs and this one inch. Um, maybe it's three quarter inch um, grow grain. I cut them in four inches. And you slip it through like that. And then the way I like to do it, I don't like to go straight on. I think that's too many holes, not good distribution. So I, I make like a V and then I sew them on that way. And okay, so I found the ridge line, which is right there. And I want the ring coming right off the ridge line. And that's probably, um, the biggest hurdle is finding out where that is. And then depending on your sewing machine, how close you can get it. I might switch feet, but I'm just gonna tack this down for now. And I'll go ahead and run out. I'm gonna kind of situate it's really hard to sew with a camera. I'm gonna run it all the way out to the edge of the reinforcement. Then I will just spin it around and go around the reinforcement. I'll make kind of crisscrossing patterns as I go along and get it all sewn down. And I did use their Beastie D's on the, um, the ridge line and on the doors. So these are the ultralight line locks. I like to do this on my, my tie outs. I, I don't like fixing things down at the ground. I like to be able to do all my adjustments at the tarp, especially in the snow. It's super easy. I'm using that 1.5 millimeter um, UMPHE. So, um, but yeah, I, I think this is a lot easier than trying to do anything down at the at the stake. But that was, so I did that on my tie outs. So I really like these, um, what are they called? Uh, Nama claws. Um, they're again in the winter when you're fighting with snow and you want to get done and quick, these are real fast. So they're on my my Dyneema or uh, they're on my Am Steel, real short. And then on this end, I use the titanium hook from Dutch on one end. And just the tarp fly on the other one. So I only have one side to adjust. Uh, trying to minimize everything I can for in the snow. I do about 48 feet of line because we have big trees. Something else I like to use, I get them from Dutch. They're, they're, um, they're put anywhere tarp tie outs. Um, if you go to Dutchware Gear and the tarp, they've got these tie outs that you can just put anywhere you want. I find that a lot more useful for where I live because sometimes I don't, 
I have something better to tie it like a tree over there. I can pull it off just my head on one side. So I really like these, these uh, and they're bungee, so they're, they're fantastic. I bring like four, I usually use maybe two, um, but I can put it anywhere and I think that's pretty cool. Maybe someday I'll do the hoop or the, the, the bow if anybody's interested in that. Uh, maybe I'll do it on this one, I'll just add to it. Let's go inside. Just got, I usually just do some short lines on the doors. I'm, I think I'm gonna put on a little bit of shock cord. Um, but you just cross them, plant it in. And there you got your door. So, got a good, got some good 40 mile an hour gusts today. Always gotta love that. So there you go, uh, my winter tamak arc. I'm so, so happy that I got this done. And uh, of course, with all the shipping and all that, just getting parts and stuff like that was kind of a pain. But it rips up by the roll, they're outdoor ink. Um, I actually did buy the kit because they had a special going on the kit. I don't use all the components that they provide because I make some changes as I showed you. Um, but I just think this is really fun. I think this is gonna be awesome, awesome, awesome in the snow. All right, take care, see you in the trail. Bye now.